Let's demonstrate a stretch for the pectoralis minor on the right-hand side. We have our client, Justin, seated here. We have an anterior view. Pec minor attaches from the coracoid process of the scapula onto the rib cage. And because the pec minor protracts and depresses the scapula, we are going to bring the scapula back into retraction and elevation. And then because the pectoralis minor is a downward rotator of the scapula, we want to make the scapula go into upward rotation. And via scapula humeral rhythm, that occurs whenever the arm, the humerus at the shoulder glenohumeral joint, is brought either into abduction, abduction, and or flexion. Uh, so we are going to have the arm up in abduction, which will bring the scapula into an upward rotation, which is also another opposite joint action, antagonistic joint action of the pec minor. So the idea here is that whenever we want to stretch a target muscle, we do the opposite of its joint actions because joint actions are concentric shortening functions and to stretch a muscle is to make it longer. Now, I could try to contact directly on the scapula and move the scapula back into retraction and elevation, but that's very challenging logistically. So instead, I'm going to use his upper extremity as a lever. And I'm going to show it first with a contact on the forearm, but then we're going to modify that. So if I contact his distal uh, forearm here with my right hand, I'm going to bring his arm up and back, which will bring his scapula up and back, and then, which means up elevation, back retraction, and because the arm is abducted, the scapula is also upwardly rotated. So we have the three antagonistic opposite joint actions of the pec minor to make it longer to stretch it. And if I bring him up and back first, the first thing I'll point out is if I do not stabilize his trunk, his thoracic body wall, then he simply might rotate his trunk around and I will lose the stretch in the pec minor. So I need to stop his trunk from rotating to the same side, in this case to the right side. There are many ways to do this. The way I'll show here is I will simply contact on the opposite side over his shoulder girdle to his trunk with my left hand here. And now I can create a little bit of a pulling back force to stop the trunk from rotating to the right and I can nicely stabilize his trunk there. I could even kind of put my side body wall against him a bit here to add in to that stabilization. So now the next thing. I said I would first show it with a contact on the forearm, and that's what I'm doing here. Whenever we do a stretch, it's always important to ask the client, do you feel this? And if they say no, then what I need to do is say, well, gee, am I doing this correctly? Well, I'm creating a retraction, elevation, upward rotation of the scapula, the scapulocostal joint. That's all correct. Um, and if I were doing it wrong, I would change it around and say, now do you feel it? And now I'm doing it correctly. If he still says no, maybe I'm simply not bringing him back far enough. So then I have to go to end range and then just a bit past to challenge the muscle to stretch. And if he still doesn't feel it, well, maybe he simply doesn't need that stretch. Now, if he says he does feel it, so if I do this protocol back here, and I'm going to take my left hand off to demonstrate something, and I say, do you feel it? And he says, yes. And I say, well, where do you feel it? And that should be my next question. If he points over here, then what's happening is he's getting the stretch first in the biceps brachii because we are extending the elbow joint here and we are also extending the shoulder joint. And we are abducting the shoulder joint, so that means that the short head of biceps brachii especially is getting a stretch. So if that happens, it might stop the stretch for the pec minor. So we need to knock the biceps brachii out of the stretch. So we need to slacken it. So what I'll do is I will let his elbow joint flex and I'll support him so that his forearm is supported against me here. But I, now I have my contact on his distal arm, his distal upper arm. And now when I bring him up and back, because the elbow joint is in flexion, it's very unlikely that the biceps brachii would stop this stretch. And it's much more likely that he will feel the stretch in the pec minor.
Now, one more thing. Notice the angle of abduction, how high up I have his arm. If I have him at level, horizontal here, 90 degrees of abduction, the odds are that I'm probably going to get more of a stretch in the uh, pec major, specifically the sternocostal head. If I have him below 90, I'm probably going to get the clavicular head of pec major. So I want to have the arm up in abduction in the line of the pec minor. And that's going to be approximately halfway between horizontal, 90 degrees of abduction, and pure vertical, 180 degrees of abduction. So it's going to be approximately 135 degrees. Maybe a little higher for the fibers going to the fifth rib, maybe a little lower for the fibers going to the third rib, but I'm going to do that based on his response as I bring him back, and I can be a little creative with that angle, a little creative with this protocol, and see uh, when he feels it and where he feels it. So that is a very nice stretch protocol for the pectoralis minor with the client seated.